Welcome, time for some art fun. Today, I think you can tell, we're going to paint this little corgi. And man, is it cute. I did the sketch beforehand and I couldn't help myself. I filled in the eyes <laughs> with a Micron pen. It's archival ink. It does not get reactivated by water. I am so excited. This corgi is so cute. I've never painted a corgi before. Extremely excited to try. I'm going to go ahead and get my burnt sienna wet and I'm going to get my ultramarine wet. These are my Da Vinci paints. I went over um, all of my watercolors a few days ago and it really put me in the mood to use these. I haven't used them in you know for a painting yet for YouTube and one of my favorite things to do is to mix a gray by mixing ultramarine don't kill me that I dip my brush right in there I do I do I'm one of those <laughs> but mixing a gray in ultramarine blue and a burnt sienna can make a really gorgeous gray and I'm probably not making enough and I've also decided that I want to use my big brush my big boy look at that 14 silver black velvet. This is my super fancy brush. This is another one of those situations, you know, again, in that all of my watercolors video, I talk about how I wish I'd known what I was going to like before I bought everything <laughs> in existence, because I really would have just gone right to the things I super duper love. And one of the things I super duper love, a little more blue, is this silver black velvet brush. Holy smokes, this thing is absolutely stunning. Look at all this that it holds. It's like, it doesn't take much. You just get all your color on there, all your water, and it it is with you. It's coming with you. It also comes to such a nice point. This big giant brush. Look at that point I'm getting. Whoa. So yeah, I'm just trying to do a gray, an all gray background. And again, I want a little more blue and a little more water. Water don't. I got his little foot. I got his foot. One of the nice things about watercolor, you can just wipe it up. Unlike gouache. Well, Gouache, I'm wrong. Gouache, you absolutely can't. I'm thinking of acrylic gouache. I mostly have acrylic gouache right now. I've just started buying up some traditional gouache because a lot of my favorite artists and YouTubers love regular gouache. That you, it, It's basically opaque watercolor. I'm not going to talk about it too much because I'm going to do a whole video because I got a huge box from Blick Art Supplies today. And I'm holding myself together to wait to open that sucker until I open it with you all. So that's love. First of all, that is love. If I'm willing to put off opening up some art supplies, my friends, that's how you know you're cared for. Because <laughs> I want to open that up. That's like Christmas. I don't know about you, but when I see art supplies, that's better than Christmas, Hanukkah, birthdays, everything wrapped into one. It's the best. So I'm ready to go <laughs> and I'm waiting so I can do my first unboxing video with you guys. And to hold myself over, I decided to paint this little fella. So this is a puppy corgi. I got the picture, the reference photo, again off of Pexels, just like I got my little Sharpe girl, puppy girl, in my, one of my last videos. This is going to have a lot of callbacks. Look at this already. This to me already looks so much better just having a background. Now that there's a background, you can start to see this dog, which is going to have a lot of white. So I wanted a little bit of a darker background because value and just to remind you, value is lights and darks. Dark to light is the scale of value. In art, in artsy fartsy terms, I believe I have that correct. So, <laughs> certainly not the only one who talks about it. And there's lots of ways that you can learn more about it. But what I've learned is to either squint when I look at a picture, or I have these really handy dandy green. And let me see if I can find my red. I love the red. And red 
Let me see if this will work. Let's do an experiment. Okay, yeah, it totally works. That is how you can take away color and just say, okay, what's dark, what's light? This has some pretty good value already because you've got a mid-tone background. I just got these, by the way, off of Amazon. They're just two, what is this? It's called Cottage Mills Color Evaluator. And I love them. I just keep them right in my little pen bucket, right next to the desk. And it lets, it's literally what it says. I mean, it's very straightforward advertising. It is a color evaluator and it will let you decide. Instead of seeing colors like brown and gray and black and, no, I'm not even talking about colors. Those aren't even colors. Let's talk about hue, if we're getting fancy, talking about art terms. Hue, H-U-E, hue, a hard word to say when no one can see your face. That is all about color. So this brown, this is a brown. I mean, if we're being basic, basic about it, it's a brown. It's technically a mixture of burnt sienna and ultramarine. Transparent, if we're being super fancy, which apparently we are. Um, but that is a brown. What's in the brown family? And that is a hue. Whereas if I make a dark brown, that is a shade of brown. A tint, a shade, these are also words that come up when you're talking about art. Sometimes these are the words that people want to say to you and they want you to know. And I just say value because that's the one that really helps me figure out, am I on the right track? Do I have darks and lights? Is this interesting? I think it's more interesting when you have some darks and some lights and different variations of color and it's not all just one thing and that's kind of what you're going for when you're talking about this stuff you want to see a range of values of course you want to see some hues hues are the colors blue red green indigo violet the rainbow of colors that you might have and of course we have even more than that that's why we shop oh blick 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 Blick, Jerry's Artorama, Jackson's, you have my money. <laughs> you have all of my money. <laughs> and that's okay, because I have all of your art supplies. Um, but that's why. That's why we keep going. We keep buying stuff, because there's always another beautiful hue or material or medium, something we can try, something we want to get to, something we want to see how it is, see if it works better than the last thing we tried. And I think... If you get your values, I don't actually want this to be a little pink. And I have one, I have some pink right here, ready to go. And I'm going to, I'm going to use a little bit of a pinky brown for this little nosy pose, nosy bows, nosy woes right there. And that's a little too much. So again, we're going to get our handy dandy tissue. That's better. Let's get a little more water because I think I went a little too far. And now, you know, I'm going to forget what I was saying. <laughs> If your painting or drawing has value changes, darks and lights in all the right spots, which your color finder can help you figure out, then you're going to have something interesting to look at. That's why Inktober, Peachtober, all the ink challenge, month, all of October with ink challenges of all shapes and sizes is so cool because you can make absolutely stunning pieces with just... And actually, I want another brush now. So I was using with just black and white. Let me finish my thought before I talk about my brushes. With just black and white, you can make very interesting things. So now that I've finished that thought, I'm going to move on from this size 2 silver black velvet. And I'm not going to pick up my ginormous 14 again. I'm going to go with a whole other brush. This is a size 8 Princeton Neptune. This was one of my first favorites before I found the silver black velvets, which are very expensive totally worth it if you're just going to get I would just get three sizes I would get the two the 12 or the 14 like I have and then um, a midway brush like a size six or eight and you're good to go those are the only three brushes you need and you don't need them all at once you start with the eight or the six then you get either I would get the detail next and then you get the mop brush when you're sick of using this brush to fill in giant areas <laughs> when you're just sick of it and you're ready to take a break that's when you get the big boy and actually, I want to mix this more over here you know, that we get the right color for this little baby's fur. So I'm getting some yellow ochre and some bird sienna. 
and I'm watering it, watering it, watering it, because I would normally use my Naples Yellow or my Naples Yellow Reddish for this moment. <laughs> but because I don't have one in this palette, it's easy enough to mix. I can just add a little smidgen of like a warm, I'm sorry, a cool, that's a little more than a smidgen, holy moly. That was a lot. <laughs> so I'm gonna mix a lot more of this color than I planned because I just put a whole lot of pink in there. In there. And you're gonna, and a lot of water and a little bit of brown and sometimes even a little bit of blue to neutralize it even further because colors around the wheel neutralize each other. And you're gonna get something that looks, you know, pretty close to your Naples yellow. So I'm not worried about it. We're just gonna keep watering this sucker down. This is why I love watercolor because you can take a super light watery wash of something. And if you don't love that, see, look how light that wash is, perfect. Now this is his white part. So I, even though it's technically white, it's not really white. It's actually more of this sort of toned down yellowy color, but it's just a little bit. So let's take a little more of it up because we just want it a little tinted. And let's use more of this for the parts of this little baby's fur that are clearly this sort of bread box color that corgis get. They're so stinking cute. Have you ever seen a corgi? They are so adorable. It's like painful how cute they are. I get so jealous when I see someone with a corgi and I love my, listen, I love my dog. My dog is very loved. This dog gets constant snuggles and kisses. I've written so many songs for this dog that I sing to this dog for every occasion. If this dog has energy, there's an energy song. If this dog is tired, there's a this dog is tired song. There's all so many songs dedicated to this little baby. And so I love my dog. I'm not trying to get rid of my dog or anything. But when I see someone with a corgi, you know, I'm allergic. I'm allergic to like almost every kind of dog except my dog. I do get so jealous because they just look like little, oh my gosh, their tushies are so cute when they walk. It looks like they're shaking their little tushies. They look like they're dancing. They are so just smushable and kissable and adorable. I just love them so much. And this one really is starting to look like a real corgi. I did make the eyes bigger than in the picture. This part's a little bit lighter. We're gonna have to take our time with that part. Um, they are just so cute. If you have a corgi, please, dear God, comment below and tell me about your corgi. Is it so cute? What are their personalities like? I have no idea. I only ever see them in passing on the street when people are walking their dogs. I'm like this with um, French Frenchies too, French Bulldogs. When I see a French Bulldog, I will stop traffic to run across the street to pet a French Bulldog. <laughs> I don't know about you guys that there's any particular type of animal that you're like this with. I know mine. I know which ones I'm like this with. And now you do too. <laughs> so we're really starting to get a face. We're starting to get the face is happening. It's starting to look like my little corgi face that I want the quirky that I'm looking for. Little sweet face. Totally forgot what I was saying earlier. I knew it would happen. This is getting a little too much. Okay. This is why I love to have a tissue with me whenever I watercolor, because sometimes I go to town. Sometimes I get a little too excited about a color. This is my first time moving your tripod away from the place where it would touch my desk, because my desk does move quite a bit. So I'm hoping that creates a little bit more stable of an image for you. I'm always thinking about you. I want you to have a good experience. I hope that you are, because this is a lot of fun for me. I like doing this with my buddies. And hope to continue, because it's been super duper fun so far. Art makes you happy. I mean, tell me if you were making this. I hope you are. I hope you're doing this with me. I hope you're painting along, as the title likely will intend. Um, that it's making you smile and you're having a great old time seeing this little baby come together. And what I messed up there, this is another thing I really like about watercolor. It's called scrubbing. I don't like to do it with a fancy brush like this. But if I'm doing it gentle, and that was pretty gentle, then it tends to work out. And I'm going to try to make a surgical precision instrument with this tissue. There we go. Okay, now we're talking. So I'm just gonna finish this little layer 
right? See, that's where the, the, the face is brown, not, not in. I was in too far. And then the next move is to do a darker brown. We're really going to do this fast. I think this is a fast boy. So we're going to do a little bit of a darker brown. And I took a little bit of the burnt sienna, but now I'm dipping into my burnt umber. And this is why I love these big, giant, full-size pans that Da Vinci gives you in this palette. Because I don't have to dig my beautiful, fancy, silver, black, velvet, oof, just delicious brush into a little baby half pan and smush, 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 smush. I don't have to smush it. Okay, so we've got a little bit of darkness here. And now I'm using my detail brush because we're getting into some detail. We've got a lot of cute little dots here. I wonder if you'll even be able to see that because it is super small. But these are like his little, this little baby's whisker base. <laughs> whisker base is what I would call that. Now we've got a little lower lip. Oh my goodness. Fully killing me. Fully dead. Okay, this is my ghost now talking because that lip is the cutest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> Why is this dog pouting? Like, this is what I'm saying. Can someone talk to me who has firsthand experience with a corgi? Because they, they just seem like they would have such a different personality to any dog that I've ever interacted with. They are so stinking cute. Okay, and we've got this. We've got a little bit of a darker area here. Just a little depth. Again, getting some value. Also getting some hues going. Okay. Yeah, that actually does. It connects up with this little, like, uh, winged eyeliner that this dog has, apparently. I don't know why this dog is so fierce. But I'm feeling it. I love it. I don't mind. I don't care why this dog is like this. I'm here for it. I'm loving every second of this adorable little baby. This little baby. Okay. I've actually got a little bit of, like, blue happening in the ear. I don't think that's coming across as blue. Let's do a little more blue. That is coming across as blue. Okay, now we got it. Oh, so cute. Oh, okay. And then there's a little on this side. And it, this side has more of like a fur texture. So we'll, we'll be dabbing. We'll be dabbing. We'll be flicking. This side is a little wetter, so I won't be able to do that kind of detail. Oh, it's a little too high. Okay, so we'll bring that back down. And tissue it up. <laughs> you're really getting, you're getting the hang of it now. You're understanding what we're doing here. Tissue time. Tissue time. Okay, I think I might stop messing with the ears for a second as soon as I finish messing with them. Okay. <laughs> As soon as I finish messing with them, I'm going to stop messing with them. And let's do the blue here. So this is a shadow on white fur, but it looks blue. And this has always fascinated me. I don't know about you all, but anytime I see someone painting black or white fur, I'm baffled by how many colors are in there. And I love learning from that. And here I am doing it myself, and I feel very daring, highly daring, putting blue on white fur. This is it. This is what we're doing. Okay, so that's actually the little baby neck. And that's how you see it. I'm just doing plain water here. Just going back over it. And this is actually why I used blue pencil in sketching this little baby, because I knew... And there I am messing with the ears again because I knew <laughs> that there was going to be some blue in this fur. We're going to do this back part because this part is also that corgi bread color, that like delicious, warm, perfectly baked bread color that we love to see in our corgis. Okay. And then the rest is going to be white. This is just accumulating a lot of water. What, what's happening, what you're seeing here, this is actually a great example. This is my Stillman and Burns sketchbook. I had talked about how it didn't, I wasn't super impressed with the paper on this Alpha series sketchbook when I first got it. 
And this is a good example of what I was kind of talking about. The paper doesn't, it's not watercolor paper. And I'm trying to use a whole heck of a lot of water on this sucker. And you're seeing sort of how it takes that. What I wanted to put in there before I even started on the dog were these lines. There's like a line in the pavement. This is always so hyper stressful for me trying to do a straight line. My hand is probably going to shake up a storm and I just try to remind myself you know what I tell myself at these moments my mantra that I tell myself and it makes me feel so much better I'm going to share my secret with you hopefully it makes you feel better too in these moments I just say to myself painterly strokes <laughs> painterly brush strokes and it just calms me because that's what I look for when I look at art I'm always like "Ooh, cool you can see the the painterly brush strokes where that artiste used a brush this isn't you know this is real this is real artwork this wasn't made in a factory oh my goodness painterly brush strokes amazing so that's what i just <laughs> tell myself when i'm doing delicate details and i don't want to mess them up that's when i say painterly strokes okay honestly right now i almost want to stop because this dog is like the cutest thing i've ever seen not just because it's a corgi but because it's a puppy and it's looking up at you and saying, give me my treat. Give me my treat. Do you think that this corgi, like, it, is that what they do? Do they hypnotize you? Is that why they're so cute? Because they're actual hypnotists and they just fool you into giving them treats and loving them forever? Is that what's happening? Again, I would love to hear from a corgi owner if I'm imagining these things. Because I think I'm right. <laughs> I think I've found out what these these little fellows are doing these guys hypnotize you they hypnotize you and then treats are galore treats are coming i would do it i think i've decided what kind of dog i want to be if i'm a dog definitely a hypnotist and i don't think there's any other breeds that are hypnotists so i guess i'm gonna be a corgi with a bread box color and a big old chunky butt that i would wave at people <laughs> <laughs> they wave their little chunky butts around. You know they do. You know they do. I'm not making it up. Okay, so we've got our indication of shadows under the fur. And I, I do think this one's a little too dark. So I'm just going to kind of chill these out a little because they're a little too sharp. And that's another thing I love about watercolor. You come in with clean water and you can just chill things out and blend them out. I'm literally done with his body. I don't want to do anything else other than these little, just something to show the distinction of this little puppy's body and the sidewalk, the ground. I just want to make sure it's distinct from the background. Let's use a nice background. That's a nice fancy term. You know, I love to use my fancy terms. Background. And then let's give this little paw the shadow it's wanting it wants to be like almost entirely in shadow you're welcome there you go this little toe this little toe omg i'm literally don't know how i'm going to survive this painting because this is so cute <laughs> so cute and then we've got these little puppy these little puppy shadows this is going to take like no time at all. The sketch took probably 15 minutes. I did struggle to make the face right. When something's this cute, it's kind of like with the painterly strokes thing. I, I have to kind of psych myself up because it's so cute that, and this is like more, this is actually sidewalk. So I'm just almost erasing these extra white parts by using more gray. And I'm also giving a foot shadow on the ground. While I'm at it, let's give this one a foot shadow while we're at it. But I get so nervous because when something's so cute, I don't, I want to do it justice. I don't want it to just be like, oh, I guess that's a corgi puppy. Maybe. I don't know what it is. I want it to be like, oh, I see that that's a, oh, don't you? I mean, I feel that way looking at this baby. That's how I feel looking at this little bear. I think, oh, what a little baby. What a baby. I want a little corgi baby, but I'm allergic. How terrible. How sad. And that's it. 
all I'm going to do is come in and add some white details. But before I do that, just because this is like a viewer appreciation moment, I'm going to peel off the washi tape. Some people might wonder what this is. This what I use is this, I currently am using this washi tape when it's all, oh my gosh, the tissues are all over my fingers. Pieces of this tissue that I've been using. Wow. I hope that didn't get it <laughs> in the watercolor. But all I do is I push it down. It's really friendly to paper. Look how it comes off so easily. It's super friendly to artist paper. There's a lot of different things you can use. You just definitely don't have to use something fancy and pretty with a pattern on it, especially when you see that I get paint all over it and it just gets ripped up and thrown away. I used to feel really bad about ripping up and throwing away my favorite washi tape, but then my washi tape was piling up and I said, oh, I guess I use this and that's how it, that's how it works is I have to use it. Okay. And so I just started using it and I'm loving it. I mean, I love seeing it on my desk. I love seeing it on my artwork. Look how cute. Oh, baby. But I'm done painting. All I have to do is some jelly roll. Oh, wow. Did I really get some way down there? That's hilarious. How did I even do that? So let's see if we can do the magic of watercolor. Because this is all watercolor and get that up. <gasps> the magic eraser. That is the baby. You've apparently been slightly skewed this whole time. I hope there was no one that drove totally insane 